Hi everyone, I'm Lucy and welcome to my first booktube video. Uh, today I'm going to do a little wrap up, I'm just going to talk you through the books that I've read since Christmas, tell you which ones I liked, which ones I didn't like so much, maybe give you some recommendations. Um, so yeah, hello and welcome to my quarterly wrap up kind of thing. So, the first book that I read um, since Christmas is, a lot of this stuff is like Christmas books. Um, the first thing that I read, which I actually read on Christmas Day, was The Sleeper and the Spindle, um, which is by Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Chris Riddell. This book is so beautiful. I mean, you can see it's like, it's not like something that you'd read for five hours on a train, but for kind of Christmas afternoon, everything quiet, glass of Prosecco and loads of chocolate, it was just so kind of perfect. I'll show you some of the illustrations so you can see. It's just so beautifully done. Um, it's really beautiful. The writing style is really nice as well. It's very fairy tale but it's quite clever, funny fairy tale. It's it's Neil Gaiman and it definitely reads like that. I really liked um, the kind of the funniness of it and the wryness of it. It does have quite a cool kind of reversal of expectations and it really plays with the ideas that you might have about this, um, about this fairy tale and about fairy tales in general. So really love that. I got this as a present, really good present for anyone who likes fairy tales, so recommend it. Um, next up, I actually, I have two books for you that I can't show you because I immediately lent them out to my friend Becky. Becky, you've had my books for a while, come back. Um, so I can't show those to you right now. Both of them were brilliant, which is why I immediately gave them away. The first one of those was The Fair Fight by Anna Freeman. Um, I know Anna from the poetry scene. She's a really, really good spoken word poet, so I've seen her do poetry. Her novel is so brilliant. It's a um, historical novel set in Bristol, I think in the late Victorian time. I might have to check that. Um, it follows a female fighter and um, I think it's really historically accurate and the fortunes of the people around her. So there's kind of like her gentleman's sponsor and um, her sister, this whole kind of like Bristol unslightly underground community. Um, I really, really loved it. The historical world that she creates is so great, really, really good. And the plot is brilliant, really satisfying and twisty and all the threads kind of come together really in a really nice way. Um, so that book, Definitely recommended. Um, I've also written down in my little, I have a little notebook of things I want to tell you. Um, I also wrote down that the characterisation was really, really good, which it's a big cast of characters. There are about five protagonists, I think. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was such a great book. Um, the next book that I immediately gave away because I wanted one of my friends to read it was The Girl With All The Gifts. The Girl With All The Gifts, in a very different way, was also probably my other favourite book of the books that I've read in the last couple of months. It's a sci-fi dystopia kind of thing. Um, it's set in a kind of close future and there are these children in a classroom, but something's very sort of wrong. I'm going to try my absolute hardest not to spoil you about it at all um, because it's really plot based, really, really plot based. It's very much drawn along by wanting to know what happens next. Um, the plot's very kind of Moorish, very exciting. I read it very, very quickly and I think um, my friend read it, texted me to say he read it in two days. A lot of people I think would do that and the plotting's very, very tight. I think that's why it's so compulsive because everything is very kind of like it goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. Um, the protagonist, two protagonists of the book, which is a girl and her teacher, are both awesome really sort of beautifully painted, um, very, very vivid characters, particularly the little girl who's the lead character. Um, and the world building as well is great. Just really, really good. Um, it feels all very, very vivid and very real. The next book that I read was The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. Um, this has been going around a lot. I've been wanting to read this for a long time. It's set in Amsterdam in, yeah, 1686. 
Um, so yeah, so in the 17th century. Um, so this book is actually based on one of the objects in the Rijks Museum, which is in um, the middle of Amsterdam. And this is actually my favourite object in there. It's a doll's house and it was owned by a rich lady. It was actually owned by um, Petronella, whatever her, the protagonist is named after the person who owns the doll's house and when I saw it for the first time about 10 years ago I was really really taken with it I thought it was kind of it seemed so kind of glorious to be an adult and have this incredibly beautiful elaborate doll's house replica of your own house made um for some reason that really appealed to me so um yeah really excited to read this book um and I know Amsterdam quite well so I really really loved the accuracy of it. It's set in a district that I know quite well, which is um, Jordan. Um, it's just a very, very beautiful area, so I really got a lot out of that. Um, I'm not quite sure what to tell you about this. I wanted to like it more than I actually liked it, which is a bit of a problem. Um, the characterization is really, really beautiful, and the writing is really beautiful, the kind of sentence level writing. I really enjoyed it was a bit slow to start and then it was a bit quick to end. That would be my criticism of it. Um, it took a really, really long time for anything to happen. And then when things started happening, they snowballed too quickly. I think I think the pacing was a little bit off there. Um, another criticism I would have is, I don't quite feel like the strands were tied tightly enough um, in the resolution. Something about it just felt a little bit unsatisfying, like I wanted more. But having said that, I really wanted to like this and if you're thinking about it give it a go basically. Um, so my next book and uh, my last proper book is The Quick. Um, this is um, it's a uh, gothic again Victorian again quite gothic-y. Um, it's kind of about vampires which is nice and it's very cleverly done and it's done with a lot of um, attention to detail. I think that whoever wrote it, I think Lauren, Lauren Owen, um, I think that she has studied a lot about gothic literature and that really kind of comes through. It's, it's quite an academic book and I like that about it. It's also very exciting and it's very cool. I have a very similar complaint to The Miniaturist. Um, so the setup is great. The setup is really, really great. I want to be really careful about spoilers in this because if you read it, I it's, it's again very plot driven like the girl with all the gifts. So you don't want me telling you what happened. So actually what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put myself in black and white when I do spoiler bits. Um, so spoiler, black and white. I'll go back to colour when I've stopped talking about it. Frickin' owl. Seriously, um, I don't know if I've missed this earlier on in the book, but I was so angry. Um, basically, at the very end, like 20 pages from the end, the sister locks her brother up um, and nails him into a hole. And then, just as she's leaving, she's like, oh, did you hear vampires can turn into owls? And this guy's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I heard that. And I was like, I didn't hear that. And now I know exactly how it's going to end. Um, so when they big, did the big reveal of like, and they opened the door and the vampire was gone. I was like, no, I'm, re I'm really sorry. Like, I wanted to like it so much. I didn't feel like that had been earned. Um, it, I mean, there's an owl on the cover. Like, someone's obviously decided that that's a motif, but I need that we I need that weaving in earlier. I need that to be a plot point earlier. Um, it would be very cool if everyone was like, nah, they can't turn into owls, whatever. But I feel like as, as an audience, we need to be um, tipped the wink a little bit more. If you've read this and there was a reference earlier that I missed and I'm being unfair um let me know in the comments I'd really like to know that because I that kind of spoiled it for me okay spoilers over okay I'm back and still talking about the quick um yeah I really liked it but the first half of the book seemed quite different to the second half of the book I felt the denouement was a bit messy but world building brilliant very very cool very gothic-y um Another one I really wanted to like, if you're just going to read one of the books that I wanted to like and yet didn't, read The Miniaturist. I've got one more bonus book. Um, I haven't actually finished this, but I got it for Christmas so I'm working my way through it. This is the Buffy the Vampire Slayer canon season 8. So like, Joss Whedon is one of the writers on this. This is legitimate Buffy stuff, so uh, that's awesome. I'm just going to show you one of the pictures. The illustrations on this are so good. I'm trying to find one that's not a massive spoiler. I'll just take something from the very beginning um, so it doesn't matter. I'd really recommend these. Um, here you go. Really cool.
cool. Um, I don't read graphic novels very often. I have a few back from a course that I did at uni. Um, I never really got into them. I was kind of like, mm, I'm not quite sure. I'm trying again because, um, you yeah, know, this is silly. Like, I really love films and TV and I like what the visual medium can add to stuff. So, like, I sh I'm going to try with graphic novels. Um, I feel like I can't read them in bed, though. I feel like or on the train or any of my normal book reading, I feel like there's this certain place where I can read graphic novels. So, which is, I think it's probably Sunday afternoons, like on the sofa. So I'm gonna try and parcel out a little bit more time for myself to do that. Um, so that's my wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. Um, it's my first booktube video. So um, thanks for watching that. If you are um, like me, if you like, me um, and subscribe as well that would be cool um, so just to conclude if you're only going to take one recommendation from this the fair fight all the way the fair fight it was amazing and if you're going to take two then um, I'd add to that the girl with all the gifts which really was very good um, so happy reading and um, see you next Sunday bye guys